to start, I first of all, I'm a professor at the National University of Mexico, the UNAM, but I'm um, concluding my PhD at the Colegio de Mexico, the College of Mexico, that is the most important institution in social sciences research in Mexico, and one of the most important in Latin America also. But um, the title is the State Investment in Municipal Water Systems, the case of Mexico City, and this is from a Marxist political economy perspective. So it was not easy at the beginning, how to rationalize all the categories or the different categories to address the problem of uh, the water system, actually, and, uh, and the water industry in Mexico. And the problem is that uh, some of the categories are not uh, are from the 70s and 80s, and I think we've seen a radical change in the last three decades about the, how the public services are provided in different countries. And so the objectives are. Uh, to analyze the process of commodification and also I would, uh, I would say the marketization of water during the neoliberal era in Mexico and especially in the metropolitan area of Mexico City and it will be specifically performed and start evaluation of the monetary investment in hydraulic infrastructure and of the water supply volumes to the city and this is to show how the supply volumes of water to Mexico City and the investment in the infrastructure that allows the provision of drinking water is associated with different forms of governance of the municipal systems. And to discuss in the paper also how two major ideological differences of the provision of water coexist in Mexico, in, well, in the metropolitan area of Mexico City. Um, just a little bit of the historical background. Mexico City, as um, some of you know, it was founded in 1325, uh, so around 700 years ago, and it was founded on a lake. So that's a major problem for the supply of water to the city because the water of the lake was not drinkable and also we had to import water from using aqueducts to the city and it was a, when we realized when we performed the historical analysis of water in mexico city we realized that it was a fully organized with a, a bureaucratic system and apparatus the, the, the that provided water with the city, with officials from the government, with uh, the water it was a uh, part of, uh, it was property of the population. It was like this consciousness about the um, communal property of water, but they had to pay, the Aztecs had to pay because of the provision of water, so they paid for the service during the 14th, 15th, at the beginning of the 16th century into the city. And obviously, when uh, after the Spanish conquest of Mexico, um, things didn't change in the way that uh, water was supplied in the city. It was uh, through major aqueducts. Here is uh, uh, the, the most important aqueduct that supplied water to the city. And also the, for the indigenous population in Mexico City that uh, lived that kind of bit uh, segregated inside Mexico City of the Spanish people uh, received water through a different uh, aqueduct also to the city. Also, the major problem in Mexico City was the constant floodings of the city and the exploitation that, begin, uh, that uh, began after the colonial time of uh, artesian wells to obtain water from the subsoil. And it was a major modification on the of the environment of Mexico City and the lakes were drained and uh, so the city completely and radical changed about the way that you can see in these pictures to the city that is now Mexico. And this is Mexico City is not Venice in 1952 after a major flooding of the city. And the paradox of Mexico City's location is precisely that, that it was built on a lake. The water from the lakes was not drinkable and uh, they had to obtain water or we have to obtain water from distant sources in order to provide water to the city. And during the rainy season, there is always a risk of flooding for the city. Um, the methodology. And the, here I want to point that um, one of the major concerns of the research was what is uh, the realm of the public or the, the essence, what is public in public service. Because sometimes when it's provided in a private way, we we'll usually talk and discuss about the governance of water and the institutional changes. But we never refer or make reference to the value of the infrastructure. And at the end, the infrastructure that is uh, built historically is a social capital that is used as a capital and is um, bought with the 
that is used in a in communal way. So the, the category that they use is one that it was developed from the seventh from the 70s and 80s and that is being evolving, that are the general conditions and services for production. And um, the general conditions of production refer to infrastructure at the end, that is this fixed capital used in a social way or in a socialized way. So I think that part of what is public is precisely uh, the value of the infrastructure and the way that is used uh, communally um, regarding of the way that is uh, governed governed. Um, so the general conditions and services for production, that this is the category, is formed by a combination of natural and infrastructural means of production and of workers and the inputs that are the general services of production, which provide goods or services uh, such as water, electricity or roads that are indispensable for the general process of production of goods and for the reproduction of the labor force, but that are externally produced of the individual capitalists. So this huge capital, this huge capital that at the end, if we add the different social capitals of the city, considering the city as a force of production, are, it could be bigger, more important for the way that the capitalism and the labor force of the society reproduces itself, than the private capitals that are usually smaller than this uh, enormous apparatus of uh, infrastructure for the city. So one of the things, and it was a question about uh, how to understand the problem, it was when the privatization of a water system in a city near to Mexico, Aguascalientes, occurred, and we asked how much the private capital should pay for that capital that they were using as a private capital you know, in order to provide a service. And they didn't know, and the municipality never charged to the foreign companies uh, for the value of that infrastructure, of that capital. So this is Mexico City, where it's located, and this is the Mexico City metropolitan area. And this form is very complicated, because Mexico City is uh, some of the city, half of the city is in the federal district, that is Mexico, as you know, is a federation, like the United States, and the federal district is like Washington, D.C. And another 40 municipalities that are, uh, covers the city, and uh, there are um, more than half of the population is there. So this is um, the water supply system and coverage in Mexico City, how it's composed. The population, as you can see, 8.8 .8 million live in the federal district, and more than 10 million people live in the municipalities of the state of Mexico. Um, but what is important is that almost uh, all the infrastructure is in the federal district, despite that it's less than half of the population. Why? Because of certain institutional arrangements and also because of the fragmentation of the rest of Mexico City in, in small municipalities. So there's a major difference of having a major water supply system for the federal district and 40 small municipalities for, uh, with each one with a, a small uh, public system of water. So that's a major problem because there are certain uh, columns of scale the water provision also. So um, this is the volume also supplied in Mexico City, the most recent calculation, that is around 70 cubic meters per second to the city. But also, again, we receive more than half of the water for uh, the area that has less population. So to the federal district, around 35.41 and less of that uh, quantity to the rest of the metropolitan area. So how is governed the water industry in Mexico City? And here is the problem, the complication about the, um, about the governance of water. We have also the federal government that it brings with some institutions, the National Commission of Water or the National Water Commission. And we have also two different state governments. One is the system of waters of Mexico City, or the water system of Mexico City, and the water commission of the state of Mexico. And so. In the federal district, we have these uh, small companies, also the, as you should know it, the Oria, Swiss Lyonnais, that have a concession for the commercialization of water, for the marketization. Uh, but they are contracted with, uh, for um, the metering of water to charge the people, but they are not allowed to cut the water to the people or to perform any act of authority. 
So it is important because the government in Mexico City controls uh, the finances of the public system. And, um, but the problem is that we have another very small uh, municipal water utilities in the rest of the, and also a municipality inside the city that is communal, is operated through communal autonomous providers. That is a very interesting case. So we have a different series of arrangements inside the city. And that's a major problem of coordination, you know, so for the rest of um, for, for us. And the finances of water, and here is what is important. We compared uh, the finances of the 40 different municipalities and of the federal district. And we found the very interesting things at the end, because while the, the small water providers, the municipal autonomous providers, spend a lot in administrative expenses. And uh, the federal district, for an example, invests a lot in infrastructure. So that's the reason why the value of the capital is much more bigger. So as you can see, this is a, on the top there's a small municipality and on the bottom of the federal district, and there's a major change in the per capita population, how it's invested in money. And this is the expenditures in administration and maintenance as percentage of annual investment. So as you can see, we spend much more now in administrative and the labor force than in capital or investment in capital in the whole city. And here is what is important, what I want to show. And this is that the value of the whole infrastructure of Mexico City, of the federal district, is uh, 11 and 145 billion dollars, the value of that capital. So I want to know which another capital in the city has this magnitude of value, no, or uh, private capital, and how it's operated. So it's very complicated. And the annual average incomes are uh, around 393 um, billion dollars, and the expenditure, as you can see, is much more bigger. So there is a deficit that is covered by the government with different taxes in order to, op to continue op uh, to operate the system. That is, uh, so that's very complicated because the tariffs or the charge for the service is not as important as how um, the money is transferred from different uh, taxes in order to continue with the operation of the system. So it would be impossible to follow some recommendations in Mexico about how um, about the autonomy of the municipal systems and that a small municipality with a small water system is better than a bigger and much more coordinated system inside the city. That's one of the things that we found. And this is another thing, the organic composition of the drawing capital, that it says that it's requiring in a difference with the private capitals, much more during the time, a uh, labor force or a much more complicated administrative system in order to operate this huge capital. And one of the problems in Mexico also, and this is the challenges, that is um, there's a social construction that water in Mexico City is not, uh, is not safe to drink. So Mexico is the country with the higher per capita consumption of bottled water, for example. So we have, in certain municipalities, this trend to marketization, to follow market principles to operate in small municipal systems. But we have also a major uh, advertising campaign of uh, Coca-Cola and different companies in order to uh, um, encourage the consumption of, full, of bottled water. And we consume more than the United Arab Emirates and, or something like that. It's crazy. So that's a challenge for, for municipal systems. So the conclusions. Um, water and sanitation services constitute a general necessity for the adequate functioning of cities and regions. It is highly recommendable that the service must be provided by governmental organism in order to avoid the risk of its private supply and the inevitable conflicts of interest between private firms and the general requirements of the social and economic structure. Also, that public intervention is even more necessary considering that its construction, the construction of this huge capital, requires ma major financial investments with low profitability and a low capital rotation. And it is imperative also to provide these services in an undervalued way which means that it should be carried or provided for less 
than its total cost of production, which requires the participation of the state that should cover the deficit with other taxes. That's it. Thank you.